Okay, this video is probably going to be a shorter one, but it's going to be very important for those who are having problems connecting their Google accounts with N8N. And that is especially difficult because Google uses something called as Auth2. And it's a little more complicated than just putting in your key credentials like any other API platform. And I'm making this because I have received a lot of messages from people who are having the same issue. So I thought uh, I would just create a video. So if you also get into the same problem, you know how to tackle that. So the usual problems that happen when you try to connect uh, your Google accounts with N8N is that sometimes it says that you have to refresh your credentials every seven days. And sometimes when you try to sign in with your Google account, it just says that application is blocked. And in this video, I'll give you a solution for both of those problems. So this is a very simple automation which I have created in which I have just put the major Google services that we usually have in our automations. And here I'll teach you how to connect one of them. And if you are able to do that, it's very easy to connect the rest. So for example, I'll just go to Google Drive. And here you will see that everything is empty right now. And here I have to add a new credential. Now, this is the screen that you will see. Now, here you will see a client ID and client secret. Now, Google doesn't give you a page where you can just get a client ID and client secret simply that you can paste right here. You have to go to Google Cloud Console and create a project, enable the APIs, and then get the client ID and client secret to put right here. Don't worry if it sounds all complicated. I'll explain it to you. So, I'll do the easy way. I'll open the docs. And I'll show you how to navigate. So here you will get to your Google Cloud Console. And this is the Cloud Console that you will see. Then you click on. I'll also put the direct link of this Cloud Console in the description below so that you don't have to run around the documentations. Now, once you're here, what you have to do is to create a project. So even if I have one, I'll create a new project like here. And you can name it anything. But let's say I'll give it a name like NHNYT demo and I'll create this project and it will take some while it will take some time and then it is created on this notification button now I'll go inside this by selecting this project now once my project is created now I have to enable the APIs and services I want to use inside this particular project so I'll go to APIs right here if you don't see it here you can also go from right here and we'll select enable APIs and services. So once you get here, before you will add any APIs, you have to do something called as auth consent screen. So you go into this section and create a Google auth credential for you first. So we'll click get started and you can name it anything. I'll name it demo. And this is very important because this is the email that you have to provide of the admin account of this particular Google console. So I click next and here I would advise you if you are doing this for a client or somebody who's outside your immediate organization or it's somebody else, do it external. And if you're only using it for testing, select internal. So I'll choose external here. I click next and here you can have the same email ID which you had mentioned here as your contact information. So I'll just put like this, click next, agree. Continue and create. Now, this is only one step that we have done so far. We have to do some more steps. Now, we have to create an auth client like this. And we have to create an application type, which would be web application. And you can name it anything. I can just keep it like that. The most important part here is to add the authorized URIs, which you will find in your n installation right here. For me, it says localhost because I have hosted it and locally. For you, it might say something else. The important part is just copy this as it is. Go back and add it like this and click on create, right? And you will get your client title, which you can copy and click OK. And you will have all the information right here. And then you will also have your client ID and your client secret right here. Right, so this is what you have to paste inside this particular section. So I'll paste my client ID right here. And then I will paste my client secret from here inside this. As you do that, you will get this button 
enabled, which is sign in with Google. But right now, this won't work because we haven't enabled any APIs inside our auth application. So let me do that. Click save here. So I'll tell you a shortcut. Just go on this and search for API and services. And you will be at this place without any issues. And what you have to do is you have to click on this button and select which API you want to enable for this particular Google credentials, right? So we want to have access to Google Drive. So I'll enable this. Okay, so Google Drive is now activated inside our auth application, which is inside this particular project. Understand the hierarchy. The biggest one is the project. Inside the project, we have our auth application and inside that auth application, we are giving access to these APIs, right? The Google Drive is done. Now we will do, uh, let's say, calendar. Enable. So it will get enabled in the background. I will probably do Gmail and enable like that. And just to show you some demo, I'll also do YouTube. Like this and like this. Enable and reporting as well. Enable. So in this way, you can give access to any of the Google uh, services that you want to use for this particular auth client, right? So uh, we have enabled all of these APIs for our account. Now, if we go back and sign in with Google, so this will show us what all we are requesting from this account. Now, if I click allow, let's see what happens. It says connection successful and we are good. So we go back to our init n and it says account connected. We go out and we can see that our Google Drive account is connected. And now I can search for any operation. Let's say I search for invoice. Then I test it. And I'll just put anything in the chat message. Doesn't matter. So we have our files as output because we have connected our drive with our Google credentials. So the good news is that once we connect to one node, we can connect all the nodes just by having the same credentials in all of them, which is the client ID and the client secret. So I'll copy the client ID and the client secret and I'll go back to the calendar one and I will select this thing and I will paste my client secret. I'll save it first and then I'll sign in with Google and now it will ask me the permissions to use the calendar account. So I allow this and now I'm done and now I'll be able to see my calendars like this and do any of these things with the calendar node. Similarly, the Gmail is connected like this and it says account connected and I can search for any amount of email. Let's, let's say I search for last two emails and it will go to my account and fetch the last two emails that I have sent or received from my account. So this is, so this is what we have. And that's it. That's all what you need to do to connect any Google service. And using this method, you would not face any issues like reconnection with within seven days or blocked account. And if you have any more questions, drop in your comments. I'll be super happy to answer any of the questions. And here is one more cool automation that I have created, which you want to check out. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one.